What's growing on, gardeners? It's Saturday, July 15th, and we are cooking here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And on today's video, I'm going to share with you all the fact that you are probably pruning your tomato plants wrong. I'm going to discuss the number one tomato pruning myth that people believe and share with you exactly what to do about it. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and spread shop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. And that myth is that removing suckers from your tomato plants increases the amount of tomatoes that you get from your tomato plants. That is the exact opposite of the truth. The more tomato suckers you remove from your tomato plants, the less flowers and the less fruits they produce. Pruning your tomato plants will lead to smaller yields of tomatoes almost every time. The anatomy of a tomato plant is as follows. What you see right here is the main stem of the tomato plant. And off of the main stem of the tomato plants come the flower clusters. The flowers, once pollinated, is what will turn into fruit. Then you will see that when you work your way up the main stem of a tomato plant, you will come to a leaf node, which comes off at a 90 degree angle here. And then the main stem will continue off to the side. At a 45 degree angle, you will see a sucker. And these suckers are often advised on the internet that you remove them for the overall health of your tomato plant. Many online resources today advocate that you grow your indeterminate tomato plants as a single stem, and that means you would be pinching off all of your suckers. But the problem is when you do that, you wind up pinching off all of the possible flowers that produce the fruit. So right here, this tomato has predominantly been grown as a single stem, and the flowers come off the main stem every single time. Here is a flower cluster right here. You work your way up the main stem. Here is a flower cluster right here. Then you come to a fork where I allowed a sucker to grow. So this sucker is going to become another main stem, and then this is a continuation of the original main stem, which has the flowers. Now remember, all of those suckers will eventually turn into main stems. So the more main stems you have, the more flowers you will have, because the flowers form along the main stem. So if you have two main stems, you're going to have twice as many flowers. If you have three main stems, you're going to have three times as many flowers. If you have four main stems, you are going to have four times as many flowers as a single stem tomato plant. So every time you remove a sucker, you eliminate a potential main stem, which means you are hindering your tomato plant to only growing flowers along a single main stem. So you're going to have very low production. The way you get maximum production is you allow as many suckers to turn into main stems as possible because every new main stem will produce more flower clusters, leading to larger and larger yields. Now, if that is new information to you and that is contradictory to what you previously believed, you may be wondering why on earth earth would we prune our tomatoes at all if all it does is limit production? Well, that's because pruning tomatoes is a balancing act and whether you should do it or not depends on the varieties that you're growing and the overall infrastructure you have to support it and the overall size of your garden in general. Let me explain. First off, there are four main categories of tomato types, indeterminate, semi-determinate, determinate, and dwarf tomatoes. The only tomatoes that you should ever remove suckers from are indeterminates. They're the ones that grow indeterminately in length as vines. Your semi-determinates, your determinants, and your dwarf tomatoes all grow as some type of bush to a predetermined height. So you only get flowers off of the immediate suckers. They don't grow as forever growing continuous vines. So when it comes to your semi-determinants, determinants, and dwarf tomatoes, you can only prune off the bottom leaves of the plants underneath the very first flower cluster. Nothing should be removed ever above the first flower cluster or you will get little to no fruit off your plants. The only time you can ever remove a sucker is on indeterminate style tomatoes. So now that we have gone over that and we have discussed we are only talking indeterminate varieties here, I will show you when it is appropriate to remove the suckers from your indeterminate tomatoes because it's going to vary from person to person. Now when it comes to pruning your indeterminate tomato plants, you have to understand that there is never a rigid ideology behind pruning them. You are always simply balancing production, fruit size, and infrastructure. So for that reason, there are three reasons why you may want to prune your indeterminate tomato plants. The first reason is to accommodate a vertical support system. So 
uh, depending on how you stake them or trellis them or grow them on strings like I do to an infrastructure that's about eight and a half feet tall, you want to prune your tomato plants to let them bush out and vine out as much as possible, but you can still manage the growth. You don't want them to overgrow your infrastructure. That's the main reason why most of us prune and remove suckers from our indeterminate tomato plants. Because they grow as vines, they can become out of control. So if you remove nothing at all, it can quickly overwhelm your stakes or your cages or your strings or your cattle panel or whatever you want to grow them up against. And if you outgrow your infrastructure, the plants can break, they can choke off their airflow, they can come down with more diseases, they'll grow in each other in a big zigzag mess. So the main reason why we prune is simply so we can actually manage and support the vines. We don't want to simply grow one tomato stem or two tomato stems simply for the uh, sake of growing one or two tomato stems. There has to be a reason why we are managing and controlling their growth. The second reason we prune our indeterminate tomato plants is for spacing considerations and airflow. Now many of us only have a small backyard garden to grow our tomato plants in. So if all we have is a single 20 foot long row to grow our tomatoes, if we let them grow completely unmanaged, each of these indeterminate tomato plants can grow so many vines that they may require three square feet of space per plant. So that means we only may be able to fit six or seven individual indeterminate tomato plants in a single 20 foot row. But if you want to grow many different varieties of tomatoes instead of just a handful of the same old plants, well now you need to manage that space. So a lot of the reasons why a lot of gardeners single stem their tomato plants is when you grow them as one vine, they can be planted very closely together as close as one foot apart. So you go from basically three square feet of need to one square foot of need. So now instead of only having six or seven tomato plants in a 20 foot row, you can have 20 different tomato plants. So that means that you can grow up to 20 different varieties in a single space. Now it's very important that you give your tomato plants airflow to grow because during the heat and humidity of summer, tomatoes become very prone to disease. So if you don't give them enough airflow and you don't manage the vines and you plant them closely together, all of the vines will grow into each other and they will form a thicket that does not allow air to flow through and they become very prone to disease. So that's why you see a lot of gardeners closely spacing their tomato plants as a single stem. So they get good airflow, it manages disease, and they usually have small plots so they can grow a lot of different interesting varieties in a very small space. But if you don't want to grow a ton of different varieties and you don't care about all these fancy heirlooms and you just want production, you can give your plants more space and just let them bush out into more main stems and each plant will produce more fruit. So you can get similar yields with a lot less plants. Just let them grow out and make sure that you have the infrastructure in place to support them all. Because one plant with three main stems is going to produce roughly the same amount of fruit as three plants with one main stem. It's the same number of main stems, it's the same amount of root space. So that's how you have to think when it comes to planning out your indeterminate tomato garden. And the third reason that you would remove suckers from your indeterminate tomato plants is to increase the size of the fruits of your beef steak tomatoes. If you want to grow really large large two and three pound beef steak tomatoes, you're going to have to remove the suckers and you're gonna to have to remove a lot of the flowers as well because the root mass of your tomato plant can only gather so much nutrients to support fruits. So generally speaking, the more tomatoes that are on a plant, it then divvies up that pizza pie of ingredients uh, and nutrients into smaller and smaller slices. So all of the fruit drop in size. So if you want to grow really large fruited tomatoes, you're kind of gonna to have to limit how many uh, tomatoes the plant itself produces. Now for me, because I grow mostly slicing tomatoes, I like them in the eight to 12 ounce range, I can easily have all of my plants with three or four main stems, and that is going to give me half a pound tomatoes or larger pretty consistently as long as I'm growing beefsteak varieties. So this is really only something you're doing if you want to grow novelty extra large tomatoes. I'm guessing most of you won't, so removing suckers and flowers just for the sake of bigger fruits is probably not something that you want to do. And if you're growing things like cherry tomatoes, suckering has absolutely no effect on size of the fruit. It doesn't matter if I train my plant to one single stem or if I let it have 20 different suckers, all of the fruits are going to be basically the same size. So when it comes to things like the super sweet 100 plant, this is one single plant that I have let 
bush out all over creation. And it has suckers shooting everywhere, and as a result, it has hundreds and hundreds of fruits on it. Now, this is pretty much uh, in decline right now because it's so hot, and this has been growing since late March, early April. But you can see how much incredible fruit one single cherry tomato uh, will give you if you don't remove any of the suckers. So for all intents and purposes, I basically don't remove any suckers on my cherry tomatoes at all, and I just let them vine out as much as possible, and I do my best to tie them up and support them where I can. And that's basically what you see with all these different cherry varieties and my shade tunnel right here. I just let them grow like crazy. I have vines shooting out all over the place. If I grew these to a single stem, I wouldn't have a quarter of the number of cherry tomatoes I have in here. But because I let them vine out so much, I have absolutely enormous yields of fruit because they produce huge numbers of flower clusters that will keep producing all the way until frost if I just make sure uh, to keep the bugs off and I keep the plants healthy and the shade cloth is uh, accomplishing that goal pretty well because it's keeping the plants low stressed. Other than those three conditions, the only other time you may want to consider pruning your tomato plants is if they come down with a lot of diseased leaves. And that is what you see right here. Now, I have learned fairly recently that there is a lot of different pathogens that colonize different wilt viruses and bacterial wilt in the air right now. So actually, if I were to prune off these diseased leaves, the entry wounds and the stem that I would leave behind can quickly become infected. So I've learned in my very hot, humid, and wet climate, it's better to leave the diseased leaves this late in the season on my tomatoes than cut the tomato plants and give them an entry wound for wilt virus. Because these slow-moving early blights and leaf spots can take weeks or months to kill a plant and honestly they're growing so well up top they're outgrowing the disease on the bottom of the plant so by simply letting them have those diseased leaves on the bottom it is the lesser of two evils so I'm going to let all of that on there if you live in a much drier climate that doesn't colonize wilt pathogens you can possibly remove them but for me it's just not worth it and I have so many different tomato plants that are doing fairly well this time of year that I have no no issue with little amounts of blight slowly affecting them because at the rate they're going they should last well into September or October as long as we don't get a hurricane or something that is going to tear them all down. Now I imagine that many of you watching this right now just had a light bulb go off in your head because this all makes so much sense and you may be wondering why hasn't anybody broken it down like this before and explained it instead of just having blanket discussions on pruning your tomato plants and the answer to that question is I don't really know and up until this point, I haven't had a dedicated video like this to talk about the intricacies of pruning and whether or not you should do it either. But I wanted to make this video to get this information out there because I have a feeling after reading thousands of comments over the years that many people have not considered all of these different options when it comes to pruning your tomato plants. So I wanted to lay this all out there so it's as clear as possible and I hope that this video helps as many of you as possible. So again, just to summarize, the only tomato plants that you should be pruning above the first flower clusters and removing suckers are indeterminate tomato vines and you should only be pruning them if you're specifically trying to manage their growth to whatever vertical infrastructure you have, if you're trying to control their size because you're growing in a small area and you need to manage their airflow for disease resistance purposes, or you're trying to grow freakishly large fruit for a novelty reason or because you're entering some kind of competition or something. But other than that, you should limit pruning when all possible because technically removing suckers limits the main stems which limits the numbers of flowers which only will reduce your harvest so everybody i sure hope you found this video helpful if you did please make sure to hit that like button subscribe to the channel and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these if you're curious about all of the gardening products that i use in real life in my garden they are all linked down below in the video description in my amazon storefront link so expand the description click on the amazon storefront link and you'll see everything i use in real life and while you're there check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. If you have any questions about pruning, please ask them down in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. All right, we have a brand new toy for new daily. Toy for there you go, Mr. Handsome Boy. What do you think that is? There's some treats in there. Are you going to be able to figure it out? Oh man, what did you put in there? Stuff's falling out everywhere. Yeah, now that you're destroying the house, this better be worth it.
Dale only knows how to destroy. Dale, destroyer of toys, breaker of worlds. Well, this one was too easy. He's got it all figured out.